summertime and the living is easy here at the star in Frisco. The calm before the training camp norm here on the Blitz. And that's what we're all hoping for, the training camp norm, as we are here at Tostitos Championship Plaza outside Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. And it may be a little toasty here, but we can always look ahead, uh, just a few weeks ahead, to training camp, and we want a training, a normal training camp this year, right? No doubt about it. The return to Oxnard is certainly on the docket again for the Dallas Cowboys, but it's also on the docket because instead of having this kind of heat, <laughs> kind of turn it down a little bit, and the players, I'm sure, are definite fans of that as well. All right, and this is our final blitz of the offseason. It's been a terrific offseason where we haven't had to do anything virtually. Thank we you. have been live and in person uh, throughout out this offseason this past week the rookies finally finished up their offseason had their uh, work together in the uh, NFL rookie symposium the previous week the mini camp wrapped up and uh, what do you think the big thing is that came out of the offseason specifically the mini camp a couple of weeks ago well I think the biggest priority and Mike McCarthy actually said this in a previous press conference was the fact to get out of mini camp healthy and the Dallas Cowboys certainly did that at least through mini camp and OTAs no major injuries of course the Cowboys have had setbacks in the past around this time of year most notably Sean Lee about a half decade ago Lyle Collins even last year even though there was no training camp because of the lack of OTAs in mini camp he really did struggle to get on the field when training camp came around but instead this year Dak Prescott back looks healthy definitely something to grow upon for this Dallas Cowboys team and then also looking at guys like the offensive tackles Tyron Smith Lyle Collins some of those defenders that missed a little bit of time getting some rep as well overall the Cowboys are healthy going going into training camp, and that was the top priority this year. And when you look at the rookies, especially the top two rookies, they are going to be counted on immensely uh, on this defense, Micah Parsons as well as Kelvin Joseph. Yeah, both of those guys really need to have an impact in year one. Those first, second round picks, premium picks, are ultimately going to, to take that kind of pressure. And then there are guys, other rookies like Nashawn Wright, a third rounder who's been showing out throughout minicamp and OTAs that has really improved and, and impressed uh, some of these coaching staff uh, members as well. Well, okay, we've had basically a full off season. It's been trimmed back just a little bit, but how much pressure do you think is on the second year head coach Mike McCarthy and his coaching staff going into year number two? Here? In terms of wins, I don't know necessarily how much pressure. Sure, there's going to be a threshold that he needs to hit, but the pressure for him is to really establish a culture because last year there was no chance to really do so. I mean, 2020 was a year that this entire organization would like to put in their rearview mirror. And Mike McCarthy in his first year at Green Bay went eight and eight. Guess what he did his second year? Third and three. So overall he's had some impact and he has had those turnarounds. He's got to establish a culture and a winning mentality. And of course uh, keeping this team healthy which Kyle talked about off the top is a huge thing. And then once you get going into training camp, the fact that the Cowboys have an extra preseason game is going to help immensely too. Not having any preseason games last year I think really hurt. It hurt every team in the league but especially a, a new coaching staff. Well and even talking to some of the players, having fans in the stands for those preseason games is going to bring an entirely new energy but just having those early games those early matchups to kind of get your feet underneath you especially for this rookie class that is so large whether it was the 11th draft picks or the undrafted free agents this is going to be a, a crucial time of year and those reps are going to be valuable when they come around in the preseason and we are right at a month away from the Cowboys reporting for the uh, start of training camp we got much to get to over the course of the next half hour and we turn our attention to the Dallas defense and a big guy on that defense, Randy Gregory, when we come back on the Blitz in just a moment. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz is brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Tour AT&T Stadium, the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Tours are available daily. For details, visit attstadium.com slash tours. This segment is brought to you by AT&T, 
the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to the Blitz. Bill Jones alongside Kyle Yeomans on what is just a beautiful day for football on Tostitos Championship Plaza here. Let's check in with Danny Sarek with a profile of one of the key members of this Dallas defense. Defensive end Randy Gregory isn't a contract year, however, his mind isn't on the money. It's on earning more playing time. Gregory participated in his first offseason program since his rookie year in 2015 after a tumultuous journey in the NFL with multiple league suspensions for substance abuse. Gregory says it was refreshing being around the team throughout the offseason and his main goal this year, grow into a leader. As one of the more experienced defenders on this roster, Gregory wants to be reliable for his teammates. Being here around the guys in the locker room, uh, day to day, week to week, being around the coaches, um, you know, kind of just giving me a purpose. Um, it, you know, it feels good, kind of keeps me motivating, keeps a good head on my shoulders. It wasn't easy for Gregory to get to a point in his life where he feels as confident as he does now as both a football player and as a person. It's a lot of self love. I think, you know, there's a point in time in my life where um, you could ask me to say one cool thing about myself and I couldn't, but I can tell you 20, you know, bad things. And um, I've come a long way from that um, where I can, you know, say a lot of good things about myself. I'm very proud of myself. I'm proud of where I'm at. Uh, I'm proud of the journey I took. You know, a lot of guys don't make it as far in his leagues I have. And um, I've made a lot of mistakes, but uh, I think I've earned what I've gotten, whether it's bad or good. My best years are to come. They're ahead of me. Very excited for the future. Gregory is using this extra time around the team to prove he deserves more playing time. In the 10 games Gregory played in 2020, he only played 270 snaps, despite having the third most sacks and second most quarterback hits on the team. Gregory says he enjoys working with this new staff and is confident he'll see the field more often this year. It's obvious that I wanted to be out there and, and there were conversations that were had and it's in the past. And like I said, I have a lot of faith in the staff we have right now. I'll put my faith in them and go out there and give them all I have. Gregory has some prior experience working with defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, who worked Gregory out coming out of Nebraska entering the draft. And Gregory said even back then he admired Quinn's energy and attention to detail, which still holds true today. Gregory says that this defensive staff has made these offseason practices fun and that he's seeing new things in the game in a more detailed manner. Gregory is not the only one advocating for more playing time for himself this year. Head coach Mike McCarthy was happy when he heard that Gregory was advocating for more playing time because that's exactly what he plans to do with him. Bill? All right, thanks, Danny. And looking at the numbers for Randy Gregory in his career, 10 and a half sacks, 38 games played, five forced fumbles. And Kyle, when you listen to Randy Gregory talk, you have to just root for him. And as, as candid as he has been about the uh, problems that he's had in his past, very eloquent. He owns his mistakes, and uh, I think he's in, in store for a big year. I think so, too, and I think a lot of Cowboys fans share that sentiment. Uh, he's the real resurgent story of, uh, of a, a player, like you said, who had those demons early on in his career and has since kind of built himself into a formidable player. And you saw that last year in limited action. Danny Sarek said it a moment ago, 270 snaps, three and a half sacks last year, those coming in just two games. He had two against Washington on Thanksgiving, one and a half against Philadelphia in week 16. Consistency this year is going to be key for Randy Gregory. His pass rush was really good last year on a consistent basis. His run defense was hit or miss. He had really good games late in the year against Philadelphia. Earlier in the year against Philadelphia was might, might be the worst run defense he's had in his career. If he can put it all together and put it together for multiple games at a time, he's going to be one of the better pass rushers, not only on the team, but I would argue in the division. One of the better special teams players on this team last year, C.J. Goodwin is back for another season with the Cowboys. We explore special teams with Nick Eatman when the Blitz continues in just a moment. This segment was brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. As we wrap up this offseason, Bill Jones now joined by Nick Eatman of DallasCowboys.com. We spent a lot of time talking about offense, talking about defense. How about we talk about some special teams here? What do you yeah. think, Nick? Well, I think it's a big, uh, you know, it's a big aspect of it. I mean, I, 
you say offense, defense, special teams, but you know, as I was telling you earlier, I, I think that special teams, you know, if you're going to be a really good football team, you're going to have two aspects that are really good. I think the offense is going to be really good. We'll find out about the defense, but I think special teams has an as a chance to be, you know, in that upper echelon. Uh, last year they had a couple of iffy moments, but really when you break it all down, I think the special teams was was solid. It has has a chance to be uh, much better. Well, and the other thing about special teams, of course, John Fossil came here with a very good reputation around the league after so many years of success with the Rams. And you could see just in the inner workings on the sideline how much Mike McCarthy allowed John Fossil to coach the way John Fossil wants to coach. Yeah, and he wants to be aggressive. He wants to run fake punts. I think one thing people forget about fake punts, I mean, they ran, I think, three last year. The one thing that you forget is when you run, uh, you have a reputation of being a guy that's going to run fake punts. That, that, that makes you a, a team on the other side they're going to be leery of that. You're not going to sneak anything by them. But what happens is, is that nobody is returning any punts on you because they're so worried about how the gunners are lined up that you can get your 45-yard average. It's a fair catch, no problem. So you're not really giving up big plays just by having the threat out there. And I think that's what John Fossil is trying to do. You know, and the other thing, you notice it in the draft room. You notice it in player acquisition that uh, he is a respected man, that yeah. John Fossil is. So let's get into the specifics. And let's, uh, let's look specifically at some cornerbacks who are key. Yeah. Uh, they, okay, they're called cornerbacks, but really they're core special teams guys. No doubt about it. I think C.J. Goodwin is a guy where it starts. I, I, I would call him the ace of the special teams unit. When when good things happened last year, he was really a, a big part of it. Uh, you know, he, he makes a great plays as, as a gunner. Uh, he, he's a very good athlete, very fast. And so, yes, he's listed as a corner. And they had a little role for him in one game last year on, on defense, maybe as a spy at times for uh, Jalen Hurts. But I think for the most part, he is your, your key special teams guy at cornerback. And, and, you know, it, it's going to trickle down from their bill is how, how they make the team out. Well, how many corners do they keep? Well, you got to factor in Goodwin. I think you got to factor in where Maurice Kennedy fits back in. And Maurice Kennedy, by the way, a guy they signed last year who opted out last year, so we haven't seen him in a game. We haven't field. seen him. He's supposed to be a, was supposed to be even a better uh, special teams guy when he was with Baltimore. So that's a guy. They drafted Reggie Robinson in the fourth round. He didn't play a lot last year, got in late, made a play on special teams. He's back to playing corner. So when you when you say, all right, which five, six corners make the team, it's not going to be the guys that cover the best. It's going to be the three or four that cover the best and the two that will help you on special teams, two or three. just depends on how many that they go with. And then you look at uh, the backups at wide receiver. Of course, you got your, your top three at receiver. If you're going to be a backup receiver on this team, you yes. have to play special teams, and Noah Brown's at the top of that list. Noah Brown is, is yeah, he's built like a tight end, you know, and, and, and he he's – stuck around because he can do those kind of things. You can put him on all the special teams units. And Cedric Wilson, you, you factor him into that mix. He's kind of a jack-of-all-trades guy. I, I loosely compare him to a Patrick Creighton, maybe not as good as a receiver, but can just do so many different things. And so those two guys right there, and like you said, if you're a young wide receiver, they, they got so many of them, and they're all about 6'5". I mean, I mean the, the undrafted free uh, receivers on this team could be an NBA team, I think, or at least look like one. Uh, a lot of size, but if you're going to make this team, you've got to go down there and bust the wedge. You've got to go down there and make tackles. It's not the guys that, that run the best routes. It's the guys that you can uh, find a spot for on game day. And, of course, uh, Greg Zerline back at place kicker and under the radar signing this offseason, though, Brian Anger, who's a veteran punter, and there's competition with Hunter Nicewander. Right, and, and uh, John Fossil was, a, was asked about that earlier in the offseason, and surprisingly to me, he kind of came out and said that Anger's got the lead there. And, and I understand he's the veteran of the group, but, but Nicewander, I thought – did a, did a nice job last year. He really, uh, he did. I mean, he has a better average than Chris Jones had in, in any time of his career. So, um, you know, he's just getting started. He's a big, strong guy, big, strong leg. Uh, I think it'll be a good competition. Some sneaky parts about punting always comes down to who's the holder, you know? Who does Zerline feel comfortable with? Also, kickoffs. If, if that's a possibility, if that's somebody that the Cowboys, you know, wants to try um, in that area. So uh, I think, you know, Anger's got the lead. I'll, I'll say that because his coach said that. But I, I like Nice Wonder uh, to, to, you know, really get a chance to compete. All right, Nick Eatman, we appreciate it. And up next here on the Blitz, let's take a look at Kelvin Joseph. Let's take a look at some young guys on defense.
we found some new competition at minicamp uh, last week. We've got a new kicker on this team. <laughs> Tyler Biotis is in position. Anytime the Cowboys need a short yardage field goal, their center can do it. Right, Kyle Yeomans? Yes, he can. He put it right through those uprights. I don't know where it was from. It was probably, what, 25 20. yards, 20 <laughs> yards. It was not really a, a long distance, but it was enough. Yeah, it, it's shorter than, than what the extra point is these days. So it's a <laughs> short, short yardage field goal. Maybe Biotis can uh, do the job. Right, let's talk about some competition and some battles in training camp. And how about we start at the corner? Cornerback position. What are you looking for there? Well, that's already the the most controversial, I think, position on this defense going into the year. Who's going to step up as the number one or number two corner? That is the question that I want to ask because Anthony Brown comes back as the veteran of the group. 35 receptions allowed last year, 432 yards. He's going to have to bring both of those numbers down. On the other side, Trayvon Diggs, second year jump. Is that what's in store for the second year man out of Alabama? He allowed a 97 passer rating last year, which is much lower than what Anthony Brown did. A lot of people think that Diggs will be the top corner, but is Anthony Brown going to take what the money says as a veteran corner and maybe move into that position? Then Jordan Lewis, can he lock down the slot? I'm going to look for that a lot during training camp. And then these rookies that we had already mentioned in the show, Kelvin Joseph, Nashawn Wright, can they find their way into the starting rotation? Maybe not the starting rotation, but at least a rotation. Okay, I'm most intrigued by the linebacker competition, and it's not so much we know the, the, the top linebackers are going to be on the field. It's the competition for the most snaps in games is what I'm looking for. Competition breeds success, and Micah Parsons brings the competition for guys like Leighton Vander Esch and Jalen Smith. I think if all of these guys play at their best, it may be the best linebacking core, maybe in the entire NFL, but that's a long shot based off of what we've seen over the last couple years. Maybe Micah Parsons in that number 11 will kind of propel 55 and now number 9. Okay, and how about up front in the defensive line? What are you thinking? I think everything up for grabs on the defensive line with the exception of maybe the starting edge spots for Demarcus Lawrence and Randy Gregory. Starting defensive tackle, the backup edge rusher spot. Who's going to make the roster between guys like Bradley and I, Terrell Basham, Carlos Watkins, Dorrance Armstrong, because they're only going to take about 10 defensive linemen. There's 12, 13, 14 guys right now that you think could come in and make an impact. So I think Making the roster behind the starters is at just as much of a competition as maybe the starting defensive tackle role. All right, and when we come back here on the Blitz, we've got our bold predictions for this season. Yes, will the Cowboys rocket into the playoffs in 2021 when we come back? Dallas Cowboys Blitz was brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Tour AT&T Stadium, the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Tours are available daily. For details, visit attstadium.com slash tours. Final minute and a half of our final episode of the Blitz for this offseason. Some bold predictions. I got one big time bold prediction I'm going to throw at you. Micah Parsons, number 11, is going to be the NFL Rookie of the Year, Defensive wow. Rookie of the Year this year. And in the first game against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he's going to get a sack of the great Tom Brady. What's your bold prediction? That's pretty bold. I'm going to go even bolder. I think the Dallas Cowboys will make a conference championship game for the first time since 1996. Mike McCarthy made a conference championship game his second year in Green Bay. He's going to do the same thing with the Dallas Cowboys. I'm all about positivity. Hello, well, if you're going to put them, if you're going to put the Cowboys in the championship <laughs> game, why don't you just go ahead and put them in the Super Bowl? Well, let's not get too careful. <laughs> I can't get that bold just yet. Who, who are they playing in that conference championship game? If you get made, I don't mean to put you on the spot, oh. but uh, he's thinking, he's thinking. What about and, week one? Wait till training camp. What about the opponent? Oh week wow, Tampa Bay. Again. So it's a conference championship game preview in week one, <laughs> Thursday night football, September 9th. For Kyle Yeomans, I'm Bill Jones. And that does it for the 17th season of the Blitz, your off-season Dallas Cowboys report. We will see you in Oxnard, California, one month from right now.